What's going on guys, Bengal again here coming back at you with another video and today we are back doing another kind of NFL opinion video. This one was sent to me on Twitter by someone wanting to know my opinion on this type of situation. I can't find the tweet for the life of me. I looked all over for it, but I thought it would make a great video idea. If you guys don't already follow me on Twitter, make sure to do that. Link is in the description as well as all relevant links. Twitter.com slash Bengal Design. So um, if you want to tweet me some video ideas or things that you'd be curious about, I love to do these sit down style videos and offer my opinion on you know, certain situations and, and things like that. And this one is certainly a big one. Hits very close to home as I am a New York Giants fan. And currently the Giants are projected to get the number two pick in the 2020 NFL draft. Now they've been very, very bad. And that pick is not set in stone as the Giants could very well get a win or two down these final couple games and maybe lower their draft position. Now, of course, as you guys probably know from the title, and if you're not on Twitter, if you're not, you know, on ESPN or whatever, Chase Young, who is a consensus top three, top two player in this entire draft, if not the very best. You talk about positional value, it's tough to say. Quarterback is so important. So that might push a Joe Burrow up to number one, even though Chase Young is a generational type edge rusher. He's been so good for Ohio State record-setting season. He was good last year, and he's been excellent this year. He's unbelievable in the run defense, and his first step, his ability to beat tackles off the edge is unprecedented, and he does th so through double teams. He even has been triple teamed. So not only does he give you a tremendous value when rushing the passer because he can get to the quarterback and hit home and shut down the run as well, but the amount of attention that a player of his skill causes a team to give him opens up a ton of one-on-ones and opportunities so even if you send any type of pressure you rush five if chase young's getting double teamed off the rip you don't block the running back bring the tight end in something like that fullback h-back whatever you can have multiple opportunities to hit home with other players and that's what generational type edge rushers do is they make everybody better around them on that defensive line that's what great defensive tackles do you look at what justin smith did for the 49ers uh, for a number of years, made Alden Smith unbelievable. Again, unprecedented numbers for those 49ers. Rookie sack records and most sacks through three seasons or whatever before Alden Smith went crazy and insane and threatened to blow up LAX and a number of different things. But uh, yeah, great players make other players around them better because of the amount of attention that they require. Now, Chase Young said that the current plan is of course to focus on the college football playoff and then return for his senior season to Ohio State. Now, of course, there's a number of different ways you can check it, that out. There's the school that thinks, okay, Chase Young definitely thinks that, and he's definitely going to do that because he said so. That's his plan. He's going to return for his senior season. There's another school of thought that says, okay, He's only saying that because he's got to focus on the college football playoff. He's trying to hype up his team. And who could turn down all that guaranteed money that going number one or number two or number three? And he likely would not fall out of the top five in any scenario. Uh, but that would give you. It's financial security for probably the rest of your life if you manage it even okay. And you go super high. You're in a great position. You don't risk an injury by going back to school. But there's a school of thought that says, okay, He's just saying that to hype up his team. He's going to declare for the NFL draft. He's a junior, so he still has another year of eligibility. And then there's somewhere in the middle where I am, where I would be like, okay, let's think about it this way. If Chase Young is going into the NFL draft, he might not say so. That's fine. But the fact that he said the plan is to return for a senior season is what confuses me a little bit because I think it's perfectly fine to say, okay, my focus is not on the draft. We're focusing on the college football playoff. That's what my focus is, to win these next two games and be national champions. That's a perfectly fine goal for Ohio State and for Chase Young. But why would you say that your plan is to return to Ohio State for your senior year if you're only going to go back on your word? So I think there's a, a little bit of a gray area there. But this video, as I've rambled a little bit here, but I needed to provide the context and the background of the situation. This video is talking about the Giants' potential other options if Chase Young does indeed go back for his senior year. Now, one of the first options off the board would probably be Andrew Thomas. Tackle out of Georgia, really, really good player, excellent pass blocker probably the best tackle in this draft. It's honestly one, two with another one that we'll talk about in just a second. But Andrew Thomas is a very good player. Definitely offers the Giants 
um, a big decision if he's on the board, even with Chase Young, honestly, although I would, you have to lean towards Chase Young. They need edge help so bad, even though O'Shane Zimenez has played quite well this year. Marcus Golden has generated a number of sacks, even though he's not an incredible player. But tackle is so weak. Nate Solder is garbage. And then even if Mike Remmers is healthy, who which he is not right now, he's garbage at right tackle. And they're starting Nick Gates currently. Tackle's a very, very weak position. Giants need to look to improve that. The big contract to Nate Solder has not worked out at all. And there has been a hole at both tackle spots, really, since David Deal. Has it been that long since the Giants have had an okay tackle? It's been a long time. We got to go back to Kareem McKenzie even a little bit further for the Giants to have a real plus tackle in there. David Deal was good, but played some guard too. Um, but outside of Andrew Thomas, you look at Tristan Wirfs. The more athletic of the two tackles, absolute monster for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Another great pass blocker, good run blocker as well. I might even lean towards Tristan Wirfs um, just because of his ceiling. Incredible athlete, amazing size. I mean, you can just look at him. Uh, former wrestler, did a lot of wrestling. I mean, Giants have taken that before. Dalvin Tomlinson was a big wrestler. Of course, the current uh, defensive tackle for the New York Giants. It's quite good, quite underrated. But Tristan Wirfs is certainly an option. Another really, really good tackle prospect. Outside of Tristan Wirfs, you go back to the defensive side of the ball. Even though the Giants took a lot of cornerbacks in the previous class, a lot of D-backs in DeAndre Baker, in Corey Ballantyne, who's kind of like, that's a stretch pick that you're playing the long game with him. He's probably going to be a special teams impact player over his career more than anything with Julian Love out of Notre Dame, uh, maybe moving back to safety. You're still incredibly weak at corner. Janoris Jenkins just got cut. The Giants don't have a lot there. Jeff Okuda, one of the best players in the entire class, obviously. If he's available too, you'd at least have to consider that as a possibility given how weak cornerback is for the Giants. Jeff Okuda is an excellent player. He's got length. He's got speed. Man coverage is up there with anybody in the class. He's an all-around physical press man cornerback that's very, very good. Fits the exact scheme that the Giants want to run, although they said that they took DeAndre Baker and then they've been playing him in a lot of zone. Kind of confuses me, but uh, Jeff Okuda definitely offers a really good comparison um, and compliment to DeAndre Baker as he continues to progress. He's looked better over these past couple weeks. Now, you also look at a player like Derek Brown. Now, I think Derek Brown is a stud. Huge defensive tackle. Really, really athletic. Shuts down the run completely. Also offers an interior rush. Derek Brown for Auburn is incredible. Now, I know you look at the New York Giants, you say, okay, they're pretty strong on the interior. Well, Dalvin Tomlinson's a good player. He just drafted Dexter Lawrence. We know Dave Gettleman loves to draft his interior defensive lineman. And if the Giants don't manage to re-sign Leonard Williams, I think this is very much on the table. Leonard Williams is looking for top defensive tackle money, top defensive line money. And would the Giants be willing to give him that money? Well, you'd think so, given the fact that they traded for him. But who's to say whether they would actually go through with that or not? Derek Brown, beast of a player. If he's available at number two, which he 100% will be, if we're saying the Giants are picking at number two, I think it's very much on the table, even though I would opt to go a different direction and focus on um, more influential and impactful positions than another interior defensive lineman. This is not an Aaron Donald type player. Even if he can be one of the best defensive tackles in the league, I don't think you can take him this high at number two. But they could trade down. And if they were to trade down, maybe even if they stay at two, you do need to improve wide receiver greatly. It's a very, very weak position for the Giants, even with the emergence of Darius Slayton. He's played very well his rookie season. Again, struggles a little bit to create separation, but somehow he just refuses to get tackled. He's got great speed, even if the route running isn't there yet. And his hands are coming along. Has had some bad drops, but has done a really, really good job for a rookie late round draft pick. Um, another Auburn player with Derek Brown, but Definitely has had a good season. Golden Tate has not. He's barely played. He was suspended the first four, has been injured the last few, and even when he's been on the field, he hasn't been a, a huge difference maker. The one, or he's had maybe two touchdowns in the entire year, and then one was a screen that he took a long way. Another guy that really, really struggles to create separation. He's into his 30s. I think it was a stupid contract that Dave Gettleman gave to Golden Tate to bring him in for a long-term deal. Four years to someone that's in his age 31 season at wide receiver seems ridiculous, but they did it. Outside of that, Sterling Shepard will be coming up to the end of his contract pretty soon. He's a primary slot receiver. The Giants really don't have a true number one. I think Darius Slayton is a good complementary receiver to a number one, and that true number one could be a player like Jerry Judy 
incredible route runner, great hands, great ability after the catch. There has been some hype for C.D. Lamb over Jerry Judy, and even though I hate Oklahoma, I love C.D. Lamb. I think C.D. Lamb's an incredible player. What he does after the catch is certainly the best in the class, even if his route running is not to the level of Jerry Judy, which it isn't, even if his hands aren't quite there, and his hands are awesome. But I would take the route running ability of Jerry Judy to consistently get open over C.D. Lamb's run after the catch ability that does exceed Jerry Judy, in my opinion, although Jerry Judy after the catch is still amazing. Really, really good player. I would consider the Giants at least thinking about taking him at number two. But if they would trade back and he's still on the board, maybe at like five or six, I think you'd consider that depending on who goes off the board. Giants could very well trade down from two. Team moving up to take a quarterback, maybe Justin Herbert goes number two, maybe Tua, if Justin Bur- or Joe Burrow, excuse me, goes number one overall. I mean, there are some different scenarios that could happen where a team might move up. So the Giants are very much in a situation where they could trade down. Now, if they were to trade down, other than Jerry Judy, linebacker is so incredibly weak. I know there's a group of people that love Alec Ogletree. He was terrible last year. He's terrible this year. He is not a good player. The Giants don't have anything at linebacker. Please do not tell me Ryan Connolly. Ryan Connolly, late round pick, rookie linebacker that was okay before going down with injury. He was okay. Of course, I'm a, I'm a huge Giants fan. A lot of Giants fans like to freak out at the first sign of somebody making a couple of good plays, and I know he's a rookie. I know there's, you know, potential there, but he is certainly far from a plus starting inside linebacker. Can't cover worth anything, even if he tackles pretty well. Let's not get crazy about Ryan Connolly just yet. You need to improve inside linebacker. Isaiah Simmons, former safety that bulked up a little bit, has played this linebacker position, has looked like one of the best defensive players in the nation. Incredible talent. Giants need linebackers so bad. I can see Isaiah Simmons. I'd be very happy with Isaiah Simmons. I think he's a game-changing type player up the middle that offers you immense athleticism and incredible coverage ability, as well as being a great tackler, great sideline-to-sideline range of pursuit. Big fan of Isaiah Simmons. Outside of him, you look at still the defensive line. A.J. Epineza. Now, the Giants are currently in a 3-4, although if James Betcher, the defensive coordinator, gets fired, which could very well happen, they've got one of the worst defenses in football, Giants could move back to a 4-3. They could do a number of different things. A.J. Epineza likely would still play the edge with the option to move down uh, inside on certain pass rushing downs. He's a really, really good player. Immense power, strength. I keep using immense, but all these players near the top of the board are going to be very, very good also shuts down the run. Complete player, even if he doesn't offer the same type of burst and athleticism of Chase Young, still very, very good. Do not sleep on A.J. Epineza at all. Also, talked about Jerry Judy a little bit earlier. For the same reasons that Jerry Judy could be in play for the Giants if they were to trade down, C.D. Lamb's in play for the exact same reasons. Really, really good receiver. Definitely a number one type guy. Decent route runner. Great hands. Great run after the catch ability. I love C.D. Lamb, even though I hate Oklahoma a lot. Let's talk about another Oklahoma teammate of his in Kenneth Murray. Another linebacker. Giants need linebacker very, very badly. We talked about Isaiah Simmons. Now, Kenneth Murray, maybe um, more of a pure inside linebacker in the fact that he's a bit more of a thumper, better run stopper, um, tackles really, really well. Doesn't offer the same athleticism and coverage abilities that Isaiah Simmons does, but still a very good linebacker nonetheless. Depending on how far the Giants trade down, I think Kenneth Murray could very much be in play. And for the same reason, we'll talk about Troy Dye. Really, really good linebacker from Oregon. Definitely going to play on the inside. He's got range. He's got some coverability. Tackles really well. Troy Dye is a great player. And someone that I could really see being drafted by the Giants, even if I wouldn't be overly thrilled about it based on type, some of the type of talent in this draft class. Grant Delpit is certainly an option as well. You're getting probably a Jamal Adams type player with him. He won the def- uh, best defensive back in the nation award this year for college football, even if he necessarily wasn't the most deserving this year, probably could have gone to Jeff Okuda. You even look at LSU, you look at Derek Stingley, who is an incredible freshman for them, probably a little bit more deserving. I think it's a Jim Thorpe award is best defensive back in the nation. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's Jim Thorpe award. Grant Delpit is a really, really good player. Again, a bit of a down year compared to what he did last year, but complete safety, awesome run defender, tackles really, really well. Again, I think you're getting a Jamal Adams prototype with him. Hits hard, covers really well. 
Grant Delpit is a stud. Would love the Giants to get him. They need sa- safety help really badly. Still not really sure what Jabril Peppers offers you. Antoine Bethea certainly isn't it. And even though Julian Love has potential and could be a really good player for the Giants somewhere down the line, Grant Delpit right now is going to be better than pretty much anyone in the entire New York Giants secondary. That's another trade down option. And then we're going to end the video talking about another tackle, Austin Jackson out of USC. Again, depending on how much you trade down, I think Austin Jackson could very much be in play. Someone that's going to rise up draft boards a lot, offers a lot of athleticism, really technically sound. Austin Jackson's a good player. Maybe you'll talk about Dredrick Wills or Alex Leatherwood, the two tackles from Alabama, also maybe going to be in play. So there are a number of different players that the Giants could target. They have so many different needs. You talk about offensive line, wide receiver, defensive line, maybe on the interior if you don't bring back Leonard Williams, certainly on the edge, cornerback, safety, linebacker. The Giants need everything. They're in a situation where they go best player available. Let me know down in the comment section below if you think Chase Young's going to come out and declare or if he indeed is going to stay true to his word now and return to Ohio State for a senior season. That's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Yeah. Okay.